What's up, my esteemed walnuts? How you do today? It's SJB here, and today we're talking all about economy in Battles 2. The best way to understand economy in Battles 2 is by far with a chart. So we made a chart for you guys. Well, I partially made a chart. The Warrior 71 made a uh, really nice Reddit post where he kind of explained what the incomes are for each individual balloon. And all I did was I kind of made this a little prettier by adding some extra balloons underneath his chart. So a uh, big shout out to him for making this, and uh, let's see if this is going to help us out, guys. So this is the kind of broad overview here. You're going to notice that obviously DDTs, BADs, and Zoma Gods and everything are going to have negative income, and they will hurt you. As you move over to the right in this chart, those balloons become more and more efficient meaning they will pay for themselves sooner. Or, just generally, you want to have income in this game, earn it as fast as possible, earn it as efficiently as possible, by sending out the balloons closer to the right. It gets a little bit more nuanced than that, but that's the general idea. So let's zoom in on this chart and uh, kind of check this out really quickly. If we look over on the right side here, you're going to notice again, uh, spaced balloons are kind of like the key of economy, if you don't have that much extra money. So you're going to want to send out spaced blues, greens, and yellows, Blues and greens aren't on this chart, but blues, greens, and yellows are very efficient for economy. Uh, then you get to kind of the, the spaced leads, spaced whites, spaced blacks, spaced pinks, and spaced purples are all actually very decent for your economy. Like, not bad at all. Even spaced zebras, very efficient for your economy. And then you're going to notice kind of when you look at the grouped balloon aspect, you've got grouped reds, blues, greens, yellows, whites, blacks, and pinks, kind of all in order here. As you get bigger, they become less efficient doesn't mean they're bad for your economy they just become less efficient and i want to point that out not bad for your economy just less efficient as we move over to the left in this chart here you're going to notice we're getting to kind of like the rush balloons here so you're going to notice that there's ceramics rainbow zebras and pur purples and leads all of those guys i would consider those basically rush balloons you do not want to send those out guys out for our economy though they are not bad for your economy they're just less efficient than these other options by a pretty significant amount but still an amount. In fact, ceramics are probably one of the worst things for you you can send out. They're almost nothingness. <laughs> Alright, and then we move on to the big balloons here, which we talked about just a little bit earlier. But you've got the MOA, BFPs, oh my god, BADs, and DDTs. And you can see that they get really, really, really bad really, really fast. Especially those DDTs, guys. This is DDTs in this chart, in this little uh, left area right here. Uh, all of those guys are pretty gosh darn awful. But they're still not horrible. If you compare them to Battles 1, Battles 1 is going to be much, much, much worse than all of this nonsense, which means this game is rush-friendly. You can still send out these balloons against your opponent and still do a decent job. One other quick chart before we hop into a game is going to be this BEP uh, uh, versus balloon, which is basically how fast your uh, rush is going to pay for itself. Space Yellows are going to pay for itself in 75 seconds or just over a minute. Um, group red and blacks at about 90 seconds or a minute and a half. And then if you go kind of further towards the right, as you get closer to um, group yellows and group whites and group blacks and things, which are very common rushes, it's going to take almost three minutes to pay for itself. So uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind here, that you can have such a ridiculous difference in efficiency without even thinking about it. It takes a long time for these guys to pay for themselves. All right, up to three minutes. Down to 75 seconds, though. That's pretty beastly, man. You can look at, all, at charts all day, but you will not understand how Battles 2 actually works. You need to hop into a game to actually understand what the heck is going on here. So, let's hop into a game and get this information understood. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Q button, just non-stop at this point. Alright, we're going to hold down this Q button because we want to set out full-out red balloons here. Alright, he's going to go for a big attack shooter army over here. Yeah, it's alright. It's okay. I'm going to go for a quick Buccaneer here. We're going to try to get him up to a Grape Shot as soon as we possibly can here. Um, seems like the Red Balloons... This map is just tough. No matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, man, this map is going to be a difficult mofo to take down. All right, you're going to see these Red Balloons just... Poof, they just cut through, cut over, and they're done. They're out of here. And I lose my first blood. But that's okay. So as far as sending out Balloons, um, the basic idea is to continuously, constantly, non-stop, send out Balloons against your opponent. And uh, usually, even though it's kind of goofy, uh, usually that means that you're sending out sort of the weakest balloons against your opponent that you can until you're ready for a rush. And then when you're ready for a rush, try to hurt him, try to kill him, try to cause damage to him. So we just got the ability to send out group blues, and I have a lot of extra money, so I'm going to start sending out group blues already to not only, you know, obviously get more income for myself, but try to hurt my opponent. 
So we got Quincy here trying to clean these guys up. He's not exactly doing a good, a good job, though. I need to switch into uh, different tower strategies. We're going to go for a monkey. It's right in the middle of the map. And check this out, guys. I think this is going to be a clutch strategy. We got him on circle path. Look at this circle, by the way. That is nice. You know, if we get a bomber ace here, boom, 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 boom. Rocking everything. But it should be noted that if you ever get in trouble, it's, oh, crap, I can't defend right now. You might still want to try to send out balloons. Just send out the weaker balloons. Send out the greens or the yellows or the pinks. They're going to take a little bit longer to send out, so it seems like you might be spending more money, but you're not. You're spending way, 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 way less money on rushes. And then when you're ready, switch back into those group balloons to get that income back up. Always send out the biggest group balloons that you can send out while you still have non-stop money sends sending out. Usually you cannot send out non-stop yellows or non-stop pinks or non-stop blacks or non-stop whites until way later on in the game. So instead, send out the weaker balloons. Send out the weaker balloons... And you're going to have a better overall economy. It seems weird. Don't trust me. It seems weird, but it actually does work. Unless you notice that your opponent has a weakness and you want to exploit it. And if you notice they've got a huge yellow rush weakness on round 8, well, it might be worth it to get that huge yellow rush flowing. One kind of good little guide for yourself here is, if at all possible, the amount of income that you should have should be about 100 lower than the round. So here we go. A big yellow rush coming out. So on round 7, if you've got 600, you're doing good. On round 8, if you've got uh, 700, you're doing good. If on round 9 you have 800, you're doing really, really good. But then, you always want to stop two and a half minutes before you think the problem is going to happen. About two to two and a half minutes before you think the big issue is going to happen here. And that can be really difficult to think about, to imagine. It's not always easy to just say, oh, I know there's going to be a problem on round 12. But there is some things... Oh, look at this. Regen Yellow's coming out against me right now. That's kind of weird. Seems like he's just wasting his money here. Uh, it's currently round 9. I think he's going to have some trouble against these pink balloons. So I'm going to go for a pretty decent-sized pink rush. Let's see if he can defend them. With the tax shooter and a bunch of subs. He's trying. I'm getting income. I'm causing problems. Force a battle under. We're going to stop. Let's see if we can do it. Another tax shooter popping down. Down to 100. Down to 80. Down to 70. Down to 60. No battle energies yet. And it looks like we're going to take this guy down with our... No. No. Oh, barely. We do. We take him down with that huge rush. We noticed that there was a problem with his defense. And we exploited it. As usual, guys. That's what you got to do. So let's try this one more time on a slightly longer map and see if we can make ourselves earn a slightly higher income and or last a little bit longer and see how the income is going to actually affect things. Don't forget, right away, red balloons, baby. Get them red balloons flowing and get your defense flowing. We just hit round three. I just want a smidge more defense than what I currently have, so I'm going to try to put a wizard in this very, very tight corner right here, hoping for a nice wall of fire right there, but not yet. I don't want to over-defend. The more I over-defend, the less economy I'm going to have in the long term. I just want to keep just enough, just enough, to keep me going. At this point in the game, I still need, like, a smidge more defense. I think he's going to start rushing me with yellows and everything pretty soon, so I don't want to spend too much of my money, so I'm going to just continuously send out greens rather than yellows. I'm still kind of where I want to be with my income, almost 700 at round 7. That makes me feel pretty good right now. So we're just going to keep on going with these greens for a little bit. I'm going to slowly upgrade my mortar just to make sure nothing kind of surprises me here. And there we go. Let's keep them going. Make sure we got a good enough defense here for these natural blooms as well, because they are trying to sneak through at this point. And uh, if I get any extra additional money here, I might go for a yellow rush, just because I want to make sure I keep my income as high as possible. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go for some yellows. I got almost 2k at this point. We need to lower that down a little bit. Uh, increase this as much as I possibly can. Even though these are slightly less efficient, this is increasing this number extremely, extremely quickly, allowing me to just kind of recuperate that pretty quickly. I'm almost at 900 for round 9. Very, very good number here, folks. But I gotta be careful. I don't know when he's gonna start rushing me. He does have a radar scanner village, by the way. So that means I will not be rushing this guy on round 12. All I gotta do is make sure that he can't rush me on round 12 either with some crazy camo weirdo rush. So I'm gonna stop at 1,000 income, which is a delicious, nice number to have if you can get it, guys. Round uh, 1,000 income is fantastic. So right now, I've got this Buccaneer right here, and I don't really like it that much. I'm gonna go for a second Buccaneer right here. We're gonna switch this guy into a... Uh, crow's Nest, but I'm also going to get him up to a Destroyer. Alright, now this is going to be an extremely awesome purple and camo popping power tower, but other than that, it really doesn't do that much. Uh, but I'm almost forced into it because right now that is my best camo detection. In addition to that, I'm going to go for just a few more upgrades here. I'm going to probably get two more mortars just for that group popping power and uh, see if I can maybe pop down one more wall of fire. Here we go, we're on round 12 right now, so he doesn't have... Uh, let's see if he's going to rush me. He's going to go for some pink balloons here. Kind of weird. I can't really rush him. You know, I, I don't really have anything that I can really kill him with here. Maybe just a giant purple rush. Get enough balloons through his defense. He's got some lead popping power, some lead popping power. 
probably good enough here. So let's hold off for a little bit, and let's just say, you know what? We're going late game, folks. Let's get some more income. Continuously send out the lowest tier balloon that you can send out and still feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to continue with yellows for a little while, and then if I can, I'm going to switch into the whites, which are, again, more efficient than all the other balloons kind of around them. Oh, I guess we're switching to whites. The game just decided for me that they're moving away some of these older balloons, and that's what we're forced into. All right, we're going to go for another one of these mortars, though. I'm going to put this guy uh, right here, and if I need to, I'm going to adjust him just a little bit. Uh, so white balloons also may cause issues for this guy because he's going for an ice tower tax shooter strategy. Kind of a goofy one, but not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, again, we're continuously sending out these balloons and still having money left over, so I'm going to keep it flowing. If possible, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for a, you know what, let's go for like a faster firing double shot hot shot right here. Just a little bit of extra popping power because I'm a little afraid of the long term balloons. I do notice one small weakness with his defense, which is probably Moab balloons. I might try some sort of Moab. If not, I might try a reinforced Moab or a reinforced BFB. I don't know, 19 or 20. Let's see if those guys will actually handle this. So you're noticing that my opponent's going to send out pigs against me. And by no means is that the wrong thing to do. But it is a more efficient thing to do to continuously send out white balloons unless you have too much money. All right. You're going to notice he's going to send them, stop them, send them, stop them, send them, stop them. Uh, this will, in the long run, make me more money. Kind of. <laughs> Kind of is a weird word to say, but yes, kind of. It'll make me more money until I have too much money in my pocket over here and I need to switch back over into the pink balloons and just kind of wipe it out for a little bit. If I need to, if I want to, just wipe it out for a little bit and switch into those uh, whites whenever you're ready. All right, it's round 18 now. Pink's full out. I don't have that much Boa Pop Power right now, so let's build some more Buccaneers. I'm going to go for a... Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm running out of money. Let's go for whites again. Let's go destroy our Grape Shot. And I'm going to wait. For a quick second here on the Moab, I don't think the Moab's going to take him down. I think a single Moab's just going to be too garbagey. So we're going to go for some sort of some sort of BFB rush with maybe some purples or something underneath. And i got to stop with my income because this is right when I plan on having some rushes come out. All right, I probably should have stopped about a minute ago. But I greed. Greed, man. Greed happens to the best of us. Let's go for a second wizard. I like to put him in the corners if at all possible because the wall of fire is going to affect the balloons a little bit better in a corner. We'll go for a trifecta. All the corners here. And it's BFB time, baby. Let's go reinforced. Come on, where's round 20? Where's round 20? Where's round 20? There it is. Reinforced BFB. Let's see if he can handle that. There's a mob coming out against us. I'm not worried. I'm going to go for another destroyer on my side. Don't forget this water is, I mean, it's tough because you only get a little bit of area right here and then you have to wait for them to come all the way around before you get to come back there. I'm going to go for an additional mortar. See what he's going to do on his side. Uh, he's going to go for a battle energy here. We're going to go for another reinforced BFB. That's $5,000 spent, but he doesn't have the battle energy this time. Let's see if he can take down this one. And I'm going to go for a bunch of purple balloons underneath this guy this time. Now that he does not have an energy. Uh, yeah, the regular one just about killed him with an energy. So let's see if these purple balloons will kind of get in the way and cause some major issues. Let's just go full out purples. Not sure if this is going to do anything. Let's do that. Let's do a couple leads. Uh, he's got camera detection, so that's probably not going to do anything. And this might not kill him. This might still be defendable. Might be the key word. He's going to battle energy right at the very end there. Some ceramics are starting to reach out already. He's going to battle energy right at the very end. A lot of ice towers right at the very end there. Will he be able to defend? And it looks like, magically, he is able to defend. Good for him, dude. Good for him. Those purple balloons were killer on my income, man. They were killer. Twice as much money as the pinks. Whew. Oh, it's bad. But I still got 2,400. I'm not hurt that bad. I got to decide if I want to go for his Oh My God here or, um, yeah, screw it. We're going to go for a reinforced. Reinforced. Regular. Reinforced. Regular. Reinforced. Regular. Mm, let's go for a regular. I'm ready to go for DDTs on round 26. Hopefully force his battle energy or something. He's not sending out anything against me right now, though. As interesting as that is. Here's the Oh My God. I'm trying to keep him busy right now and get ready for that DDT rush. I might go for another Zoma God in the meantime. I might. All right, we're going to go for another Zoma God. We're going to keep him busy. He has not rushed me, like, at all. He's all about defending at this point, folks. And there we go. There's another Zoma God coming out against him here. Do I do a triple dipper? Do I triple dip him? Uh, yeah, we're going to triple dip him here. We're going to go for another. He's still going balloon income, dude. What the heck is he doing? He's so confident. 
But he shouldn't have been that confident. I don't know why he was setting up picks against me at that point. We do end up taking him down with a single non-reinforced Oh my god. We got our income up. We had a bunch of money. We are able to rush our opponent here. We got no lives lost, first blood, and we got a win streak here. Things are looking good on our side, folks. Whoop, 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 whoop. So that's blue income in a nutshell, guys. Get it up. Keep about 100 every round, and you're going to be a happy, happy person. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to press that like button for me, and don't forget to subscribe. Income can be really, really difficult to understand, but if you play the game pretty consistently, it'll just become natural to you. Thanks for watching, guys, and of course, have a super-duper delicious day.